Get to the chopper! Hi and welcome to Get to the Chopper. I'm joined by a man many of you have requested to guest host the show. He's the king of the quizzes. Wait, let me refrain. He's the joker of the quizzes. It's none other than Jalen Feeney. Is that fair, mate? King would imply you're the best at him. You're not the best, but you certainly got the most entertaining answers. Yeah, I believe that, you know, King and, and Joker go hand in hand. Um, I don't, may not get the most answers right, but I, I keep the viewers um, on their toes and I keep them coming back for more. Well, thanks for coming in and joining us today. I'm sure we're going to have a bit of fun over the next 10 minutes or so. But we just want to start the show by saying that Mandy Blackhawks want to pay their respects to Michael Purcell a former Host Plus Cup player for the Ipswich Jets and Brisbane Tigers who tragically passed away on the weekend, aged just 28. Uh, Jalen, that was pretty shocking news to hear. Yeah, definitely shocking. Um, I remember playing uh, Michael Purcell, obviously when I first got here, and then him being a massive um, influence there at Ipswich Jets. A freak on the field, he was a, a good ambassador, an Indigenous ambassador for young kids there. and. Um, I'll always remember his lightning quick speed on the field and just his raw talent. Yeah, just want to pass on our condolences from the team to his family and he will be sadly missed in the rugby league community. And um, yeah. yeah, well said mate. And of course to our very own Paddy Kafusi, where our thoughts are with him after his father passed away last week. I know the boys have done their best to try and show their support to Paddy and we can't wait for you Paddy to get back in action and we'll all be here for you. Uh, mate, can you give us a bit of an update on when you'll be returning to action? I'm um, hoping to be back um, next week. Um, I'm going to try and do it a few weeks early, and um, I was hoping to be back this week. Obviously, things don't heal as quickly as I would wish them to, but as long as I can get on the field and do a job, I'm willing to play with a broken leg or not. I knew I broke it in the air because I felt it straight away, and then I must have come down and landed on my ankle and broke that as well. So uh, it was a bit of a double break. A bit embarrassing because I felt all the pain in my knee, which was the first break, and then it all dropped into my ankle. Yeah, I look like a massive sook on the field, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, so we got out, I had my last surgery uh, last Friday, got the screws out. Um, we pretty much just went straight to no boot and started some running mechanics yesterday. Uh, pulled up a bit sore today, but I'm um, hoping to just keep progressing, progressing to run towards the end of this week and then full training next week. Um, it's very optimistic, but I'm willing to play at whatever percent I can do to go out there and get the job done. Well, we briefly saw you on the field here on Saturday at our last home game. Um, the boys looked awesome in their Indigenous jersey, and you actually did a bit of a, a welcome ceremony before the game. What was that like? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, anytime I can you know, represent my culture and represent the team in that sort of aspect, I'm willing to put my hand up. Obviously, being a proud Aboriginal man is something that um, I love to do. I love to represent my family, and um, having the Black Hawks there to be able to represent our culture. And through the week, we did the cultural week, and everyone got to get up and say a few things. So um, it was a very special moment for me. and. A uh, very special moment for the club to be able to wear the jerseys and represent um, you know, the Wulgarukaba and Bindle people. It was something very special to us. Well, we didn't quite get the result we were looking for on the field with the Pride claiming a 22-10 victory in the derby. The loss definitely dented our finals ambitions. Our fate is no longer in our own hands. But if we win all of our remaining games, fingers crossed, we'll scrape into the eight. But we'll have to play a lot better than we did against Northern. Let's be honest, the boys put in a bit of a shocker. The stats that stand out... 35 missed tackles and 14 errors. After a few days to reflect on the clash, Cade Maloney gave us his thoughts. Obviously a bit disappointed, definitely didn't play um, how he wanted to I guess for the last home game. I think I watched the game a few times now and honestly just think it was one of those days we could not build pressure. Every time we built a little bit of pressure we just released it and just from I guess mistakes people don't usually make. So it's not anything that you know, needs a big fix. It was just one of those one-off mistakes that people made and there's a few of them that made it. But you now what we can do is train well this week, fair. And every single game now is we have to play with final intensity. But three games, you need to win three games. It's still a die now. So they weren't too many positives to take out of the match then, but try scoring machine Khalifa Fifi Loa crossing in his final appearance at Jack Mansky Oval as a Mendy Blackhawk was fitting. And of course, the return of Andrew Niemöller more than three years after his last game for the club. Our cameras captured a moment many doubted probably would have happened, except for the man himself. Just get yourself back into the game, get some rhythm again. There's a strong hit on oh, Niemöller over the top. Initially I did my knee, um, I thought it was bone bruising, but 
the whole year we waited for it to get better. I uh, found out that my ITB band was a little bit tight as well, so I had a clean out of my knee and the ITB release. Coming back from that, the following year, uh, I had problems with my shoulder, dislocated it three times and then ended up having surgery last year, which brings me to this year. Yeah, it's very difficult, more so the mental battle with all these injuries. I like to think of myself as the captain of the spiritual squad, you know, the injured squad. Um, never really thought about, um, you know, giving up. That's my sort of nature, you know. It's just part of footy. I just took it on the chin and just kept working hard. I knew my luck will eventually turn. Uh, it was Wednesday Arvo before training. He pulled me aside and he sort of gave me the rundown that he was going to name me, starting as well. So I had butterflies in my stomach before he announced it. It makes me really proud to be able to say our lock this week to start at 13 is the injury game. Yeah! It was very overwhelming. Um, I appreciate the support from everyone. You know, I've got no family up here, so the boys I meet, they're like my family up here, and it's good that I get the support from them. Yeah, there's a sort of joke going around. I look like a mummy before I run out, but uh, he was excited, so was I. We go back to under 20s days, me and him were at Cowboys, so. That was our first game since under 20 together. Our game plan revolves around you blokes being more, more mentally tough than them. So many emotions were going through my head, you know, my first Q Cup game in three years. I tried keeping the emotion aside because at the end of the day, I have a job to do for the team and that was my main priority. Core and blokes in the middle, your job is to get 10. All right, get 10 and be aggressive. Be physical, win the possession battle. Speed, 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 nice ass. With any game, I get nervous, so the first run and first tackle, you're into it. So all the nerves went out the window after that. Yeah, I really appreciate the club for uh, keeping me on for how many years and I haven't played. Um, they've shown faith in me. I've been at this club since 2016 and, you know, they're like a big family to myself. Fez, you've had to fight back from a few long-term injuries, so you've probably got a very good idea of how Assi was feeling and what he was going through. Was it great to see him back out there? Yeah, for sure. Assi's an integral um, part of the Mendy Blackhawks. Um, he lives and dies and breathes this club. Uh, he'll go out there and put his body on the line every week, and we know what we're going to get from Assi. So to see him back in the colours, you know, he's, he's a previous captain of the club. He, he embodies everything that we stand for at this club and um, just shows the true character and nature of, of Assi, you know out of the game for 1,200 days or so and he still rocks up and does the job and puts his body on the line. So I guess we're lucky to have him and we're lucky to have him back. While the under-21 showed little sign of Russ returning to action after a strange two-week break in the Hastings Deering's Colts competition, the coach wasn't there but Steve Shepard's side was ruthless, running in 14 tries against Northern. Adam Mitchell was impressed with Townsville's attitude in the lead up to the contest and the team didn't divert from its game plan, pummeling the visitors 76-6. to Yeah, that's right. Well, um, Pup during the week, he gave us um, key things to focus on. Our assistant coach and all the other coaches, they just stepped in and did their job really well. So even though Pup wasn't there, the boys knew what to do. We um, had a game plan to just play, you know, upbeat tempo footy. We knew we were the fitter side. Um, and we had a lot of firepower, so we just stuck to that, played flat, fast, and um, once you grinded them out of that first 10 minutes, um, it just opened up. The whole team played well. Obviously, the school line represented that. Um, our two wingers, Louie and Jesse, both got Patrick, so I reckon that deserves a bit of a shout-out. And then um, our man of the match, Will Latu, so he obviously played well to deserve that award um, from Zeb, our coach at the time. The under-21s take on the Mustangs in Toowoomba on the weekend, while the Host Plus Cup side face the Hunters. Now, the boys were preparing for a trip to PNG. It would have been the Hunters' first home game in a couple of years, but uh, you disappointed that you're not going? Yeah, for sure. I think all the boys are very disappointed that they're not packing their bags and heading to Papua New Guinea this week. Um, I know a lot of boys had it penciled in to be able to get over there and do a job in Papua New Guinea, and you know they had their passports in early, and they were really keen and eager to get over there and burst them on their home ground for the first time in two years. So Very disappointed they can't go. While the clash is in the Gold Coast, here's Aaron Payne to preview it. So after the disappointment of the loss to Cairns here at home, we move on to another side that we were disappointing against last time here at home against PNG. We get an opportunity to try and bounce back against them in what's a really important game for us now as they all are. We basically makes the equation really simple. We've got three games. We need to win all of them to play finals footy. 
Yeah, I think the key with PNG is their strengths are certainly exactly that, their strength. They run hard and run direct and tackle hard and are physical. So very similar to Cairns in a lot of ways. And we need to be better, particularly with our ruck control and putting some fatigue into their blokes as well. Yeah, look, obviously a couple of changes this week and we receive uh, Luke Geary back after a long layoff um, from a, a knee injury, which happened about this time last year. So it's fantastic to have Lukey back in the side and he offers a lot of genuine speed on the edge. Also welcome back Dan, who missed a week through a hamstring injury and as well as Nathan Barrett, who is ahead of schedule after his ankle injury at training. So um, it's a couple of key inclusions this week and I'm sure they're looking forward to playing footy again. Thanks, Payne. We turn our attention now to local league, and plenty of Mandy Blackhawks were in action across all three games, which were won by all three out-of-town teams. Herbert River beat Brothers for a second time this year to go level at the top of the table with the Brethren, but the reigning Premiers have a superior for and against. Our lads Oscar Carter and Mitch Grimes both scored for the men in orange, but Crush's stalwart Mitch Seri scoring a try in his final home game sent the place into mayhem. From all reports, he was given a superb send-off. Justin Frayne made a successful return from a hemi injury, scoring a try for the Miners in their triumph over Centrals. Eden A. Gebe's solo effort in the first half had given the Tigers some hope of keeping their season alive, but Charters Towers were too strong. And Fez, I'll let you cover the Lions' loss to Burdekin because it involves your favourite player and favourite person, Michael Bell. Yeah, I'm glad you sort of brought that up here. So I brought a few stats from the game Excellent. with me. So we had Michael Bell, so he had a total of seven runs for a um, total of four metres. So um, he's averaging at about, you know, 0.9 a run, which is good for Belly. Um, and he had three errors, seven missed tackles, and he actually got hooked at the 70-minute mark. <laughs> So not a bad actually. Not a bad game for Michael Bell. So I'm hoping he can back it up next week in a, in a stellar performance. As for the game, yeah, Berta can held on to get a good win, 14 to 18. Um, Hammer was probably the best on field, had a few strong carries, and um, Sam Murphy is always a good, consistent player there in the middle. Now we've got a cracking final round coming up with a few scenarios in play regarding the top four. Basically, Berta can beat North, and they'll finish third. Charters Towers will also advance if they defeat the Crushers, while the Lions need to upset Brothers and hope the other results fall their way. Feds, it's going to be an exciting finish. Speaking of finish, that's us done. Great performance from yourself. Let's hope you can translate that to the field in the coming weeks. Yeah, hoping too. Thanks for having me. Um, obviously, the person who comes on next week is going to have a tough time following this. Um, so hopefully it's Michael Bell because um, he underperforms on the field and he'll just underperform next week. So can't wait. There you go, Bally. Come on and have your fair share. Now, remember you can stay up to date with all your Mandy Blackhawks news by jumping on our website and our social media pages. See you next time.